Greetings, everyone. This is John Hardiman, Public Relations Director for the New Jersey Catholic Conference. Welcome to another edition of Town Square Video, and thank you for joining us. It is my pleasure to welcome Rayanne Bennett to Town Square Video. Rayanne is the Executive Director of the Office of Communications and Media for the Diocese of Trenton, which is a very busy place with a lot of moving parts. And that's a lot for a Communications Director to manage, but few, if any, do it as well as Rayanne. Before we get started, I want to thank Rayanne and the communication staff at the Trenton Diocese, which is where we're recording today, for hosting us. So thank you very much for having us. Uh, Rayanne Bennett began her career in Catholic media in 1990 in the Diocese of Metuchen. A lot has changed since then, in, both in terms of the Catholic Church and the way it communicates to its faithful, and even in the language that it uses. Rayanne has been at the precipice of those changes for more than three decades. And in recognition of World Communications Day, which takes place this month on May 21st, it is our honor to talk to Rayanne and hear more about her story as a dedicated, invested Catholic communicator. Rayanne, can you tell us how you became involved in Catholic communications and media, the different positions that you've held? the publications that you've worked on since being hired by the Diocese of Metuchen more than 30 years ago? <laughs> when I hear it that way, so I'm like, <laughs> wow. <laughs> well, first of all, thank you so much for, for the interview. I appreciate it. Yeah. And, uh, and, you know, I really do uh, welcome the opportunity to speak about uh, not just my personal history, but how communications has evolved. Yeah. Um, so I was working at a regular little town newspaper and I took some time off to have my second child and I was, you know, involved in my parish and teaching catechism and um, I just saw it in the church bulletin, yeah. the, need, the staff writer needed <laughs> um, for the Metuchen edition of the Monitor. Okay. Uh, at that time, uh, the Monitor, which was of course, you know, Trenton publication, yeah. uh, it followed that the two dioceses had split. And so there was, at uh, some point after that, a, a Metuchen dedicated issue, and, and they, needed, um, they needed someone to be the managing editor of that. So, I'm a staff writer, excuse me, at first. It wasn't long after I was there that the, um, the editor, Sister uh, Amada, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, Sister of St. Joseph, who I have great fondness for, she's passed since, um, she decided she was retiring, and. I, uh, I took on the managing editor role. And so once a week, it was a weekly paper, I would come down to Trenton. Okay. And, uh, and I've known Mar Marian Hartman uh, here, and who does our video work. Um, I've known her that long because she was in the same building uh, way back then. And so we just did a weekly newspaper, and it wasn't until um, 1995 that uh, we decided to do our own. Right. Uh, newspaper, which was no longer the Monitor, the Matachin edition. It was the Catholic Spirit. Okay. So, which is still still, still in effect there today. Still, yeah, yes. Sure. So, with Bishop Hughes's uh, blessing, uh, because it's a big undertaking, yep. um, we started our own newspaper, and uh, I, I, it was a wonderful process to have gone through and to see, you know. All, all the different moving parts, as you say, how circulation works, advertising, we just mounted the whole thing. Sure. And, uh, and you know, it, the fact that it is still surviving is good. I mean, every, every newspaper uh, or any publication these days, especially in print, is always uh, yeah. under challenge. But, um, but I'm pleased that they're still there, and uh, I'm very grateful for that opportunity. And I did that um, until I uh, came to work in Trenton in 2005, first in public relations, similar yep. to yourself, and then eventually uh, getting back involved with the diocesan publication. Yeah. Yeah, well, I think the, uh, the longevity of the monitor certainly, uh, you know, speaks to how uh, dedicated and faithful your readers are and, and, you know, the faithful are here in the Diocese of Trenton. So, plus well, it's a... I, I was going to say, you know, um, we learned uh, a few years ago uh, from a priest who did a research project that there actually was a monitor 
way back, and it would serve the entire state. And it, it wasn't the iteration of the monitor that we know that was the Diocese yep. of Trenton, which began in 1954. Yeah, wow. But how we changed over the years, even from then, is a lot. Sorry, I didn't mean to. No, no, that, that's fine. <clears throat> so, uh, so, yeah, I mean, you've dedicated 30 years to Catholic communications work. I mean, how would you describe the role of this work in the life of the church and why it is so important to, to you and to the church? Well, you know, I, I've always been um, very uh, mindful and humbled by the fact that the church itself has recognized the importance of Catholic communications. I mean, there were encyclicals, there were conciliar documents after uh, the Second Vatican Council about how we are called to use the uh, mass media, they would call it different things, yeah. but it's all the same, um, Catholic communications to evangelize, uh, to be spreaders of the truth. Um, and, and also, in more recent years, to offset negative influences yeah. that, are, that are out there. So, um, you know, the church teaching itself has always been very clear about how important Catholic communications are to, or is, in the life of the church. You know, one of the things that um, I recall when I first came to work for the, the church, the diocese in Metuchen, is um, just... <laughs> being in awe of all that there was going on. I mean, having been a Catholic all of my life and being involved in church when I was, you know, a teenager, was CYO, and, and then being um, a catechist in my own parish, not knowing a lot of, of all of this. And um, that spoke to me about how important it was, the work that we do. And of course, you know, just because we're saying it, doesn't necessarily mean people are hearing it. Yeah. Uh, so that sort of um, gives us our marching orders on how to do that better. Um, but, but I feel that um, people get snippets of information in the regular, in the secular media, whether it be television or Facebook or, um, you know, or any other, whether it be movies. They, they get a certain understanding of church that's very polarized. Uh, oftentimes it's the worst stories, and, um, and they're not getting the best stories. Yeah. The church loves all people. Um, it, God loves all people. We're to love all people. Um, yet, if we just listen to the secular media, the church is always condemning. The church is you know, not, not accepting or rejecting. And, and that is not the truth. Uh, that is not the fullness of the truth. So to be called to try and spread that awareness um, is something that I, I feel very, um, you know, humbled by. Yeah. Yeah, so, and that really leads into the next question I wanted to ask you, and it's about challenges. And that certainly sounds like one of the, you know, bigger challenges you face as a Catholic communicator. But can you talk about some of the other challenges that you face um, as a Catholic communicator um, that, you know, even go beyond what normal, you know, uh, communication professionals might face in their professions, because this is the Catholic Church, and it, it at times is polarizing. So maybe you could talk a little bit about some of your biggest challenges in that regard. Uh, I'm glad you brought that, you know, that distinction up, because I think any uh, anyone trying to do communications, you know, is up against the same things. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, we know what they are. We all know what they are. They, there's distraction uh, and a sense of just being overrun with information. Every yeah. time you pick up your phone, you're getting notifications and what have you. You know, with the Catholic community, um, many... Catholic families, they have very busy lives. And, and, you know, they might have a personal prayer life and they might try to uh, read scripture or, or have um, faith-based discussions with their children at home. But, but their time, and you look at a schedule, my, my, my one daughter keeps a, a Google calendar and the color and, you know, sure. it's everything, yep. everywhere. She's got four kids. Um, but the, um, you know, the ability for them to focus is is really hard so um and i also think that you know we've we've changed over the years for instance when the monitor f was first um in, you know established by by bishop Barr, um 
the church would speak and people would listen and there was no sense of, you know, well, I've got to be in 10 different places. Right. And you know, they, we, I think people were hungry for that. There was also the sense that just like the uh, establishment of Catholic schools, we, we wanted to be in a place where our faith would be respected and protected. I just feel as though there are, um, you know, so many uh, different distractions and people's attention is being pulled in so many different directions that if I had to boil the challenge down to one thing, it's that to make it engaging, to make it real, um, to inspire. Yeah. Uh, so we're not just talking words at people. Yeah. We're really trying sure. to inspire through words, pictures, video, even um, you know, with the full communications component, yeah. uh, all the different elements. And, and I think we have to employ them all. It's not just one or the other. We sure. have to use them all. So that's yeah, well, and to your point, I think um, the, the, the constant uh, you know, the news that people are being, fee uh, being fed um, really, I think, from my perspective, gets down to one of the biggest challenges, and that's that you just have so, so little time to get somebody's you know, attention and to keep them. And so, um, you know, it, it challenges us as communicators to really have to be you know, very compelling with the words we use and the format in which we're, we're presenting. So I, I agree. I think that it's fantastic. And the Trenton Diocese, and we'll talk about this in a minute or two, has um, employed so many communications mediums. So, you know, you're doing all you can to reach your audiences in, in all the different formats in which they want to, you know, see content. So that's great. And try. <laughs> Uh, so at a time when many dioceses are, you know, shutting down their print publications and, and, you know, we know just looking at it outside the Catholic community, the same is true, you know, for many organizations and nonprofits who just don't do print publications anymore and they're doing everything online. The Trenton Diocese still publishes a, a print product, the Monitor Magazine, as you mentioned. Um, so can you describe how the publishing work of the Trenton Diocese has changed over the years and why that's been necessary? Sure. Um, and I kind of touched on it a little bit when I said that, you know, we have to look at how we're delivering content yeah. and messaging to our community. But um, before I go any further on that, I have to really uh, acknowledge and thank our bishop, who is very media savvy. I mean, there is no one in the communications and media office or staff that doesn't know this about Bishop. He's right on top of things and he's supportive. He tries very hard to give us the support we need. Um, in another diocese, perhaps this wouldn't be the case, right. you know, sure. so, so sure. I really am uh, very mindful of the fact that we have much to be grateful for with him. Um, but as I said, since the Monitor was uh, begun by Bishop R in 1954, uh, and it was a black and white weekly, you know, uh, it, it's, it's come over the years, you know, whether it be cost factors that needed to be addressed um, or just the uh, glaring awareness that people are not going to read just, you know, pages and pages of great gray type, you yeah, know. Sure. Uh, so, you know, we learned over the years and uh, certainly before me, uh, it was already, you know, evolving um, that maybe we don't need this every week. Um, we need color. Yeah. <laughs> we need beautiful pictures. Sure. Um, we need shorter stories, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and, you know, I'll be honest, we're still in a struggle yeah. uh, because um, the events that we cover not that we don't have a variation every year, but the, the events, many of them are the same, yeah, you sure. know, because they follow the church calendar mm -hmm. and, the, and the workings of the church. So, um, y you know, there's always been this compulsory way of reporting on that, and we're, we're just really challenging ourselves to find different ways of doing things yeah. um, so that it is meaningful to the people who have that split second yeah, sure. to look at it, yeah. you know, uh, whether it be that they're looking at it online. With the magazine, um, we went to the magazine in 2019, um, which was an acknowledgement of the fact that people are not getting their news in the same way, and, and that newspapers, nobody liked the way newspapers felt, yeah. you know, and it was, a, it was a whole process. But, um, but by doing a magazine, we felt that we could deliver something more beautiful, yeah. um, something more inspiring. Um, and um, 
it, you know, it, it really has, people made the change with us very well, yeah, you know, sure. and, and we've had a lot of really good feedback. Do we want more? Do we want more readers? Of course. Sure. Um, and, and there are some among the priests, uh, you know, uh, pastors and, and others that might say, well, you know, let's just put it online. I like looking at the digital version, you know, so everyone has their preferences. Yeah. And, um, you know, the getting the, um, just making people aware that it exists is still a challenge. Yeah, Not I everyone understand. even knows that. So, um, so we're working on that. But, yeah. um, but I think every form of media, whether it be video, whether it be social media, and certainly, um, you know, news media online and in print, it has to, it has to evolve. It has to, sure. because people, and everything's changing so quickly. Um, you know, you yeah. know yourself being in this business. You are, absolutely. And, and uh, you know, years ago, Facebook was the, uh, you know, the, the giant when it came to social media. Even that's changing. <clears throat> so uh, it moves quickly in this, in this space. So, um, so in regard to the monitor operation, I mean, how, how many people do you have working on that? And, you know, I, I recall from my days in, in the corporate world, um, I worked for a large company. We had the benefit of being able to produce our own, you know, our own collateral, our own materials, newsletters, things like that. Um, I, I guess that's probably not the case here. So does that mean you have to, you're working with outside vendors to put that together? Or do you do your own uh, publication here? We do our own. Okay. Um, we do uh, subscribe to OSV News, which is uh, a new uh, establishment taking over for Catholic News Service, which closed down last year. Right. Um, and that's an Our Sunday Visitor product, and they they prop that up quickly to you know pick up on the need that was going to be out there. So um, we we have that as our source for national news, yeah. um, you know things from the Vatican. Actually, Catholic News Service still has a Vatican bureau, but you get the idea, we, we get that. But all of the local content, the local coverage, um, and also the publication of the source material that we get at elsewhere uh, is all done in-house. And we have very small staff. Um, we, um, we have one editorial full-time person. Okay. Uh, and oh. um, we, ha we have a designer who's also full-time. Okay. And everyone else, myself included, um, and, and a few others are, are separated or divided, I should say, among the different departments of communications. So insofar as, um, as the monitor goes, there are two full-time people okay. working on that. But the way we do what we do is we have wonderful uh, freelance partners right. who, who support us. There are people who have sometimes worked with us before and have left staff, uh, or we've just come to know. Some of them I've known um, the whole 30 years yeah. uh, and worked with them um, right. and been blessed to have that uh, relationship. So really uh, what we do is a result of the partnership with um, our staff and, um, and our freelancers. So do you have relationships uh, with all the parishes within the diocese as well who are uh, you know, sending you information <coughs> on <coughs> things that might be happening in in their parish that might be something you want to include in the in the monitor. Is there that you know that relationship back and forth? There there is some of that, but I will say that it's it's uh, decreased uh, over the over the past few years with the advent of social media. Right. Because just like everyone else, parish staff have only so many hours and or their volunteers only so much time to do what they do and in their opinion if they get it out to social media they've they've checked that box yeah. and some of them still send to us but you know what what we then often get is we're telling stories about the same parishes sure. Sure. you know so um, so it's a, it's a, a bit of work really reaching out to them yeah, and sure. you know, very often it's at our invitation to respond to to something um, that we've heard about or whatever and, and also you know keeping our ear to the ground to look for the the news story the different kind of story sure. something that would be of great interest um, to everyone so um, we do have a relationship with the parishes but it, it it migrates and it changes and even is subject to their their staffing and and their own resources um, but they know that we're here for them. At least I hope they know that yeah. we're here for them. And the schools as well. Sure. Uh, you know, we, we really do consider um, 
serving them and their needs as one of our top priorities. Yeah, yeah we used to, um, again, back in my days in corporate America, we used to say video is king now. And um, here we are having this discussion mm -hmm. on video. Um, and that really gets into podcasting as well. That, that, that too, you know, that, that's an evolution in communications um, that we've seen over the last couple of decades. And it sounds like you have embraced that. And it sounds like uh, Bishop has embraced that as well. Um, how would you say that you were, you know, what kind of focus do you put today on videos and podcasting versus traditional communications where, you know, you're said the newsletters and, um, you know, even the monitor. Uh, and not to say one has to be better than the other. It's probably a combination of all together that makes it work. Right. But it sounds like Trenton Diocese really has embraced um, podcasting and videos. Is that something you could talk about? Sure. Um, and I will just affirm what you, you're saying. I, I mentioned earlier that I think that um, it really is about having all those levers yeah. going at the same time and and through that we'll we'll end up reaching more people but the video uh work of of the diocese of trenton uh has been well established um it as i said it was going on 30 years when i was doing the metuchen edition yeah. of the monitor um there have been television programs that this group of folks um and some of uh, predecessors uh, or people who have gone since, uh, they would produce yeah. um, weekly or um, monthly. I'm not sure I should, I should get <laughs> clarification, but there were programs. And I think the, the realization uh, was that, you know, people may not be looking at television programs like that in the same fashion. They're also very costly. Um, for as much as we can say about video, video is one of the more costly ways of doing things unless we're talking about using a cell phone on social media. But when we're talking about quality video, you know, it is an, um, an inexpensive endeavor. Um, but what they have uh, <coughs> kind of uh, transitioned to is uh, creating video for different purposes uh, on different subjects and their work has been just uh, really extraordinary. Um, and Bishop is so grateful for, yeah. for them. Uh, one of the best things that they do, because I think it really touches the hearts of the members of our community, is they live stream masses. Sure. And, and when we say live stream masses, I mean a lot of parishes live stream. And you know, it might be an iPad on a, on a tripod. And, sure. you know, but they, they do you know, camera switching, they do beautiful lighting, they really uh, have folks feel like, like they're there. And, and you know, the Chrism Mass was just this week. Right. You and that. Uh, you know, that, that live stream was just breathtaking. Yeah. And the feedback the next day, even later that night, is just such gratitude from people who couldn't be there for whatever reason uh, and felt like they were there. So you know, they're, they're really performing uh, an important ministry through the, the work that they do. But they do also do you know, video production as well, yeah. whether it be for our annual Catholic appeal or to promote something that's going on or to raise awareness on a subject. They've done things on uh, like school busing when yeah. we had that going on, uh, you know, needed to get the funding up. You know, they, they really, we work to get their, uh, their talent and resources targeting things that need to be done. Yeah. They've been fantastic. We're grateful to have them. Yeah, well, that's great. Um, here's a kind of a fun question. I'm anxious to hear the response. Um, social media, I mean, we can't talk about communications without talking about social media today. Do you see it as a blessing or a bane? <laughs> yeah. That is a good question, um, and I think I, uh, most people in the field would, you know, wrestle with the same kind of question. You know, social media. I think for everywhere, uh, no matter what platform, it has good and bad. Yeah. You know, we've seen it bring great blessings and uh, benefits, uh, but of course, there's all the ugliness and the swampiness and and all the stuff that we um, we would abhor. Now, you would think that you wouldn't have that right. uh, when people are responding or you know, engaging with a, um, a social media platform run by the church, whether it be the diocese or a parish or a school. 
but you know the ugliness comes out even there. So, um, I mean, taken as a whole, um, social media is a blessing. It, it allows us to reach an audience that you know the other means may not be getting right. to. Right. In fact, you know, um, the live stream that we spoke of uh, with the Chrismas that was also live streamed on Facebook. So. Um, you know, we do have that. Now, we, we have someone who's uh, dedicated to um, social media. We have a social media manager, sure. and she's, um, she considers that her community, and she right. works to be very responsive to them, and she keeps an eye on it 24-7. Well, that, that, you know, we, we do that as well at the New Jersey Catholic Conference. Um, you have to be on top of it. Yeah. You know, if people are going to be, if you're posting something and inviting people to respond back to you, you have to be prepared to respond back to them, yeah. to acknowledge their comments because you're asking them to, right. to engage. Right, she, she is responsive and I, I also, uh, you know, we're pretty strict too and some might not think we should be as strict as we are but we're pretty strict in what we allow to remain uh, if it's a, an off-color comment. You know, yeah. the way I look at it, it is for um, you know, the advancement of the kingdom. It is yeah. for, uh, you know, spreading the gospel and, and church teaching. It is not for taking pot shots at individuals. Right. It's not for uh, brandishing political views. Uh, so so we're, we're pretty strict. We have an acceptable use policy and we, yeah. we have it going a lot. Um, and people, you know, may not like it, but um, I, I just think it's important that we identify our social media sites as being in service of, of, um, of God and sure. our mission. Absolutely. And, uh, it, you know, the, the speed at which communications moves these days, you know, you could spend decades building up your brand and something could go bad on social media and, you know, you can do a lot of damage to that in a short period of time. So my compliments for uh, your diligence and, you know, the oversight that you give your social media platforms. Um, Rayanne, before we wrap up, and this has been great, there is one question I'd like to ask you. Um, if you had the opportunity to talk to, you know, a group of college students or uh, communications majors who were thinking about getting into Catholic communications, is there any advice that you would give them, anything that you'd like to share that, you know, you've learned over your, um, you know, your years in Catholic communications? You know, I, I, I think I would say, um, in all honesty, it, it's very hard work. Um, it, it, you really don't leave it when you leave the office. You, you have it going yeah. all the time. But at the same time, and I know that my, my colleagues in the department and in the office, they feel very much the same way that, that we have a purpose. Uh, that we're not just working, um, you know, we're not just working for a paycheck and we're not just working for a product, um, but we're working uh, to serve the church and uh, to, in our minds, help people. Yeah. So um, I think that um, if they're called to something more than uh, making money, because you're not going to make a lot of money yeah. <laughs> working for the church, I think everyone knows that. Um, but if you're, if you're called to, uh, to a life of purpose, it is an option, yeah. you know, yes. it, it really is. For sure. And it's engaging. It's always new. It's always different. Um, uh, one of the things that they've always said, you know, with newspapers, uh, people who are in newspapers, you know, they have, um, you know, ink in their bloodstream. And, yeah. Uh, but it is almost an addictive thing because as soon as you finish putting a publication to bed, you get started on the next one. Right. So, sure. So for all those reasons, you know, there's... It, always something to to be addressed to get your attention um, and I think it's a it's a calling that's worth uh, you know the best people there well wow. that's uh, that's a great way to end today's uh, video um, Rayan Bennett executive director of the office of communications uh, at the Diocese of Trenton it has been an absolute pleasure to speak with you today and thank you again for having us and to our viewers, uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, we look forward to our next video. And um, remember to visit njcatholic.org, Count Square Video, to view all the videos we've done leading up to this one. Thank you very much.